This one is on the employment, employment visa. Um, I will focus on the uh, legality of the aspect. Um, as we have uh, mentioned uh, numerous times, even we have um, highlighted this to the government of Nepal. Before we implemented all the systems, um, it is clear that it is the uh, system for visa application implemented by the government of Malaysia. The reason being is we on the security aspect uh, and to increase our uh, standard standard of processing. So this one should be clear. Uh, number two is it's a standard uh, process we implemented in uh, every country which uh, visa into Malaysia is applicable. So not just in Nepal, but it is uh, a standard procedure we implemented in uh, all countries. So that one should be clear. So the issue whether the process uh, is bur burdening one country, whether Malaysia is uh, segregating one country to another does not rise. So that one, we hope that uh, the people of Nepal very clear. It has nothing to do with uh, a particular country. It only we only focus on the uh, our process. We only focus on our process. Yes, for employment, uh, for a worker, they have to. I, I know the figure in Nepali, in in, in rupee, seventeen thousand uh, eight hundred something. Eighteen thousand seven hundred. Eighteen thousand seven hundred. Because for first they have to go to ISC. First they have to go to Immigration Security uh, Center. So because they have to register that uh, they have to register there. If they cleared with the security, then they should proceed to another uh, procedure, which is biometric. Biometric focus on health, health screening. So biometric. After clear biometrics, then uh, the agents have to get approval uh, from Putrajaya. Once they receive the approval, because over there is another screening. Once they receive the approval, then only they can proceed to uh, apply for visa. Apply for visa. So all in all is uh, close to eighteen thousand. Um, the, the difficult part is on the biometric when not difficult but the confusion because everybody when when I first arrived here everybody keep asking me what is biometric what is my cram my cram is the company company handling biometric so the the, the issue with uh, with my cram the payment for the services is paid in Malaysia so that's the issue so we, we are trying to rectify this. We are trying to rectify this. But at the moment, the procedure has to be followed. So you cannot you, you cannot skip biometric. Because that is the, the, the standard procedure that we implemented in all our source countries. In India, in Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, Vietnam, in Indonesia, Indonesia, Philippines, and uh, all. This all. So the procedure has to be followed. It's just that from time to time we are looking at improving. Uh, like you said, how to uh, facilitate uh, the recruitment of workers from Nepal. Because for us, Nepal has been number two, burden the government with the cost. So it is developed by the private sector. So we have uh, assigned uh, companies in Malaysia to handle it. So companies in Malaysia, they will 
uh, joint venture with the company in Nepal because that's the that's the requirement by the government in Nepal for any foreign uh, business entity they have to have a local business entity so they have assigned uh, their local partner so that one is uh, beyond our control uh, the embassy but we have the obligation of ensuring that the uh, service provided uh, is according to the um, set of standard that we have uh, developed so we we have to make sure that uh, the operation uh, is according to the uh, SOP uh, that we have provided. So that is the responsibility of the embassy. You have to understand, like I said before, biometric and migram. So people got confused. Yeah. What is biometric? What is my, like I said, migram is the company that handle biometric. So in order for you to get the result of the biometric, you have to pay first through migram. Mm. Because at first I was also confused when people ask me about uh, uh, my grant because I only know biometric. So now it's very clear to me my gram is the company handling biometric. So you have to pay uh, my gram to my gram, then only you get the password, then you get the result of the biometric. It's just that I personally feel that the the operation could be simplified. So this we are working. This we are working. Because I know there's a certain limitation here in Nepal whereby for uh, international payment you have to get approval from central bank which is very troublesome to uh, some agents. So so this one we have highlighted and hopefully there will be uh, an improvement uh, to the system. Everything that been done here by the embassy, facilitated by the embassy, all uh, according to the uh, instruction that we received from Putrajaya. It's not that the embassy thing that we have to do. Uh, no, two, two separate. Uh, you, through the naked eye, it seems uh, similar, but it's separate. Separate data. You you have to understand. VLN and Consult Center. VLN is a system, is a data collection system. Previously, our our visa is similar to uh, the one uh, issued here, to stamp. So after we introduced the VLN, now we produce the sticker. Okay. Because all the data we key in into the system and we can produce the sticker for visa. So that is after VLN was introduced. The one sub center uh, is we uh, give the responsibility of having a center dealing with the public, no more the embassy. We only uh, deal with uh, official, official and diplomatic aspect. For official and diplomatic, they can come to embassy for their visa process. But for social, for for uh, students, for employment, they have to go to uh, one-stop center. One of the reason is that we want to reduce the risk, the security risk to the embassy, because too many too too many people coming to the embassy is is uh, can can lead to some security risk. Uh, we before earthquake we used to receive 1000 to 1005 application per day so you can you can imagine how crowded the embassy could be yeah i i, I was been here <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. now after after earthquake the the number reduced significantly we receive um, average around 400 per day so still that's why, one of the reasons why we introduced the one sub center. So it's it's to to again through the naked eye it seems similar but it's different. But it's different. If that that one is more of the operation aspect, what 
if we put all in one places, it would um, uh, facilitate the applicants. But you have to understand, the fees is still the fees. If we put all together, the fees will be still the same. You cannot, you can expect the fees to be uh, reduced if all of the all of the facilities are put uh, under one roof because the operators are still the, uh, different. No. Yes, yes, yes. Like uh, for one shop center, that one is dictated by the embassy as per the approval given by Putrajaya. Okay. So we make sure they follow that. They follow. Uh, for one shop center, we have set uh, this limit, 2,800. And uh, we have told them because at that time, it was not clear whether uh, VAT, they are eligible, uh, they, they have to pay VAT to the government or not. So we told them, okay, for one year, if they have to pay, they have to absorb for one year. True enough, after a few months, uh, they have to pay to the government. But as per what we have told them, they absorb until September last year, period of one year. And then uh, we told them, okay, as per our agreement, you can charge the uh, applicants. Um, as per the requirement by the government but all in all we have everything we have communicated to the government of Nepal so that we, because we don't want to to have that confusion we don't have to, uh, we don't want to have the um, thinking that um, all this arrangement is done by this private uh, entity no it, it is uh, as per the requirement set by the government of Malaysia. We only collect the uh, visa fee, okay. which is clearly stated in the yeah. sticker, 700 rupee, okay. that one. The rest is the, uh, what has been uh, approved uh, by the contract. Contract done uh, in Malaysia, not here. Uh, whatever the, the business arrangement between the company in Malaysia and, and them is nothing to do with the embassy. If you ask me, I also don't know. 3,200 3, plus 700 plus 200, 2,800 yeah. plus 13% back. No. Altogether, 7,480. 13% visa, uh, VAT is 700, 7,800. Uh, 700. 6,780 no, no, 780 80, yeah. because this 30% based on uh, 6,200 not the 700 because that yeah, one is yeah. can, cannot be it's charged clear. Uh -huh. it's clear mm. have, there have uh, instances we also ratifying with, with uh, Putrajaya one could be not because the ISC because of the biometric because arriving in Malaysia, they have not to do another medical screening. Another mm -hmm. medical screening. Within uh, seven days, I believe. Once arrived, they have medical screening. And if they are found to be... Um, if they are found to be uh, health risk, they have to come back. So, this also part of the improvement uh, exercise. Uh, that I mentioned to you, uh, that we have uh, highlighted to Putrajaya for them to look into it. Um, they have other cases which we also don't have the data here. Only the data is only uh, the data is only uh, managed by at the entry point. Yeah, entry point. Uh, uh, yeah, of course. Which which is beyond our control also, because we don't don't have the data here. Not only for employment, we also have cases for social, social, social visits. Yeah. We issue here, but they are uh, uh, stopped from entering. Because at the entry point, they have another system, which only they have it, the data. So it's, it's difficult, it's supposedly, yes. Yeah. Yes. It would be an issue. Yeah. Because, they, as I said, the system is developed 
uh, in accordance to the requirements set by the government of Malaysia. Um, that one uh, is beyond because I'm not aware of what happened uh, to Bassinet. You you're talking about Bassinet. Uh, I'm not aware of such suspension because we didn't receive any instruction to um, to postpone biometric. As far as uh, the embassy is concerned, the current procedure stands. First ISC, second biometric. They have to get the approval from Putrajaya, then only can proceed to OSC for the final visa. I think they are talking about the system. They're talking about the system. The property is their property, the, the, the business entity. In, in part, they are correct because for you to enter, you have to get the permission from uh, the head of the company. Yeah. To enter someone's house, you have to get permission from uh, the owner of the house. Oh, nothing to do. As I told you, it's a separate entity. Yeah. We facilitate the implementation. Uh, whatever the arrangement is between the company in Malaysia and the company here. But we have the uh, responsibility to make sure that the operation of the business is in order according to the SOP that we have uh, implemented. You have to also put the question to the government of Nepal. It's a, a two-way initiative. Um, we have to discuss because um, for Malaysia, we have yet, even though Nepal is number two, we have yet to have um, a bind agreement between both countries. Yeah. So that one is a little bit odd. Uh, so we have to have this uh, MOU as to make sure that uh, every um, employment, every recruitment is done through uh, a blueprint that both sides agree. Then we can ensure that the recruitment process will not, uh, no parties will take advantage. Because if you, you have to agree that in terms of the labor, it tend to be a good business to some parties. So we have to control it. Uh, we have to start the discussion uh, last year. Uh, because prior to this, uh, part of the delay in terms of discussing this is the ever changing of the government here. <laughs> so we, we hope that uh, the process will, will be expedited uh, this year.